And the next, and as I mentioned, is the dosage. Dosage of colchicine. Colchicine, as any drug, has side effects. So we want to get the lowest possible dosage for any colchicine for any patient. Now, uh, I and my brother-in-law, who is a computer scientist, we're working on a neural network design to be able to train our neural network. The uh, neural network is a computer program which is designed based on the brain neurons. And to be able to train it, with the patterns, you can see over there the inputs, which are, we have 103 different symptoms for, we have devised for FMF to input. Then it goes through two hidden nodes, and then it gives us the dosage, uh, which computer thinks based on all the information that we give to the computer, it looks and creates the pattern between the patient and says, okay, this patient with this dosage, we're doing fine. I'm, I'm thinking that this patient is similar to this, <coughs> bunch of patients and this dosage is the best for them. This will be a tool that I'm working on. Soon I will have it on my website for the physicians just to for the, uh, help them to go in and try to look at this and find the idea of what the dosage, because many of them called and they didn't know much about the dosage of the cultures. It's not a very prevalent, it is, it is used a lot, but many people don't know how much of it because it has diarrhea as the first side effect and some other side effects which are not very pleasant. So that's the research that we're working on. Well, you can see that these are not wet lab research. This is all bioinformatics and it's really helping us to be able to help the community without spending too much money or having research laboratories. Uh, as we know, it's really, not easy, really easy to have a research laboratory, especially here in the US. And even in Armenia, it's easy to have it, but then it's not easy to operate it because you need money, equipment, and so on and so forth. Next one. Next. So here are the conclusions. FMF, we like it or not, is a reality amongst us and it's here to stay. So we have to actually look into it like what Jews did decades ago. They started looking at it. They have found a lot of stuff which probably they don't share with the community and their patients are doing very fine. Uh, and. Uh, I have seen several of them which they're happy living and they're not suffering with a lot of symptoms. Unfortunately, in our community, this has not been taken really seriously and it's affecting our friends, our families, our population. And we shouldn't be really ashamed of this. This is a reality. We have to work on it. We have to find what we need to do to order to contain and treat this. Um, it, it, it is treatable, it should be, could be treated now for that simple minority. That is possible too. They to just have to find the other condition that is helping the FMF to cause the symptoms. Uh, and colchicine is doing a wonder, it's a wonder drug, it's really doing fine with 98 to 99% of the patients. It's working and they have to take it and live happily ever after. Um, it's not dangerous if it's treated, there's no question about that. Family studies are key to identifying, absolutely, we have to know the family history and the, uh, how many were in the family and try to draw those diagrams that you see there called pedigrees and to show how, what people do. We have advanced technology for FMFD analysis and I'm, I'm happy to say that I had a Chinese friend at UCLA who has a research laboratory now in Culver City and he has allowed me to use his facility to continue the research and hopefully soon, in maybe a couple of weeks, we will start sequencing the gene again as a research facility, not a diagnostic facility. So that's what the next step that I'm hoping that I can help the community with this, with this project. And uh, we have to continue our research and education and uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks we will start our uh, research facility with my uh, scientist friend in Culver City to start doing the testing. I guess that was the last slide. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? My contact information. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why does culture scene work? How does it work? And why does it work like this? That's a very, very good question. Uh, the mechanism of colchicine, colchicine is anti-inflammatory drug uh, and not many people have been able to really draw a definitive conclusion. So it's not clear how it does it, but many people are saying that it blocks the inflammation pathway that pyrene does 
So it actually helps in that pathway blockage. That's what many people are. Question there also. Does do the heterozygotes with symptoms um, respond as effectively to colchicine as uh, the homozygotes do? As I mentioned, uh, except the last case that I saw about heterozygous, and again, I didn't want to question the sequencing of the gene in England, which I'm hoping is pretty advanced, but this, his symptoms were severe, so I was suspecting that he has two mutations. But the parents, so if they do the parents, probably they will know. With the exception of that, I haven't seen a heterozygous which culture into the work. It works on heterozygous because they have mild to moderate symptoms. Is it a function of haplogroups, or is it independent of what haplogroup you are in? Well, a haplogroup is a more of a population studies terminology. Here, as I showed you, let's say in the Larabakh population, it's a little different. But again, uh, it, it, this, as I mentioned, we don't have the data. That's the whole point. We don't have the studies. We don't have enough studies. We don't have the data. Like, we tried three Armenians from Iran, and uh, from three, one of them was a carrier. 